Hey guys, this is a complete beginner tutorial of Nano Mesh. But what is a Nano Mesh? Well, it is a feature of a Z model brush. It lets you add mesh onto the polygons of the model. By using the polygroups and manipulating the parameters of Nano Mesh, you can quickly scatter objects onto your mesh really quickly. It can be used in hard surface models as well as organic models like adding feathers or in this example, adding these pieces onto the octopus arms. If you are not familiar with the Z model brush, you can watch my Z model beginner tutorial. I have introduced a complete beginner tutorial of creating sci-fi space gun using the zmodeler brush now in order to use nano mesh you need to create a nano mesh brush then use that brush onto the polygons so decide what mesh you want to scatter make it a nano mesh brush and use it onto the polygons these are the three simple steps you have to do in order to use the nano mesh feature and in this video we will learn all about it so this is the viking shield here and i have this cone piece ready i want to scatter this cone piece onto this side of the shield here I will select the cone model here, position the camera to the top of the cone so when we add the mesh, it will use this direction as the anchor point for adding the mesh. Press B and click create insert mesh. Click new, then while the newly insert MM is selected, again press B and click create nano mesh brush. You need to create insert MM brush first in order to create the nano mesh brush. We have the nano mesh brush ready to use. Press B and you can see it created here. Select it. This brush uses the same functionality as the Zmodeler brush. So if I hover the cursor onto the poly, I will press Shift F to open the frame mode and press spacebar. It will open up the Zmodeler section. Nano mesh is a part of Zmodeler and you can see one tiny change here. It added a new section called insert nano mesh brush. So if I click and drag onto the poly, it will add the IMM using the Zmodeler brush. So I can insert that cone model using the target feature of the Zmodeler brush any way I can. This target section is very powerful. For example, I'll show you. I've given a different poly group onto this side of the shield, this poly loop. And I will use the Zmodeler to only upload the mesh onto the section of the model. I will hover the cursor on one of the polys, press spacebar and I will select poly group all. Then I will click and drag and you can see it only added using the specific polygroup because of the target I selected. I can also increase or decrease the depth of this brush by going into the brush settings. Look how easy it is to scatter objects in ZBrush using this feature. I have filled all these ornaments on this shield using the same feature. Nano Mesh has its own section here with all these parameters. But what do they do? Well, we'll just get into it in a bit. Apart from using it on hard surface models, you can use Nano Mesh on organic models too. Anything which requires repetition like any kind of texture, style as hairs or for example feathers. You can use the Nano Mesh method to add this. For example, I have this piece ready and I want to use it onto the arms of the octopus here. I will quickly make this piece a nano mesh brush I showed you earlier. Then I'll mask the area and use the extract feature on one of the arms here. After masking it, I'll go to the extract, increase the thickness a little bit and hit the extract. It will give me a preview of what the extract will look like. Then I will click accept. I will have the mesh with my higher polygons. So I will use the Z remesher having the lowest polygon and Z remesh it really quickly. I will Z remesh again by clicking the half setting, I will keep doing it until the polygons are really low. This looks good. I will select the nano mesh brush I created over the cursor on one of the polys, hit spacebar on the keyboard and select polygroup all. Then I will click and drag and these pieces will add according to the action I selected. I will quickly select the orange color by pressing C on the piece and it will be used as a color picker. This looks better now. Now as you can see some pieces are overlapping with each other. What I could do is I can divide the mesh with two polygroups and add nano mesh again accordingly, like this. Still, this is not as perfect as it should be. This is why some manual tweaking is necessary sometimes after adding it. But still, it saves a lot of time if you want to scatter or objects like a pattern or something. Now, if I go to the nano mesh, you can see all these parameters here. We have added nano mesh two times here. So this index will let us choose the parameters between them. For example, I can change the width of one of the instance without changing the other. Changing the index will let me choose which instances I could change. You can add as many instances as you want. The index will just keep increasing. I can change the size of the instances, the width, the height, the offset and the rotation of the instances. These are the basic parameters I can change and this is the randomness I can add to them. I can change the variables of each and it will add the randomness to it. Height, weight, size, I can add randomness to it all. So this row here lets you change the parameters and this row lets you change the variables of these parameters. The edge tile and V tile are the horizontal tile and the vertical tile. You can increase it both. 
the alignment here i will tell you in just a bit to accept these intensities and turn into a mesh go to inventory and click one to mesh and they will turn into real meshes i've added these pieces onto my arms using this method see how fast it could be to scatter the objects note that they are not completely aligned sometimes so you would have to move and adjust them manually after turning into a mesh now another pretty cool use case of the nano mesh are the feathers mostly to stylize characters i find using this method very useful now i want to add feathers to this part of the mesh i've already extracted and divided into two polygroups and i have the brush ready i will select it i will click and drag polygroup all is selected already i will add the two instances now going to nano mesh and here is the alignment it is pretty useful it simply means that you can make your instances face the same direction. The most I use is aligned to normal. It will look at the normals of the polygon and align it accordingly. I will quickly turn on alignment to normals on both of the indexes. Now I'll just play with the Z rotation and the size of the feathers on both of the indexes. I can also change the variables of the weight and variables of the Z rotation to add the randomness to it. Quickly changing the X rotation and variables of it too. Playing with the size if needed. Look how easy it is with the alignment to normal. We have complete control over this nano mesh parameters. I can increase the random distribution here and can add more randomness to it. Just like how feathers are in the real world overlaps each other. And now this looks like some feathers attached to his body. I will go to the inventory and click on one to mesh to convert them then use the move brush to adjust them accordingly manual tweaking is needed sometimes to refine it further for this wing i've already extracted the mesh this time i have divided into two polygroups again but have made it a pattern of some sort and i have the second feather mesh ready as a nano mesh brush i will quickly drag while the polygroup all target is selected and add them i will align them both using the normals I will change the Z rotation and size of the feathers, changing it until they look like a pattern. See how quickly it starts to fall in place? Aligning with normal is one of the best features of nano mesh according to me. It's stylized so I'm not changing the variables much. I'll quickly do this part of the feathers too using the same techniques I keep showing you. I already have a mesh extracted with a good topology. Z remesher is your best friend for a good topology. I won't be adding feathers to all his body but the techniques could be the same. Polygroup the mesh and use nano mesh accordingly. You can just distribute anything using the nano mesh like this and not just the feathers. And this is it guys, a beginner tutorial for nano mesh. What I have told you is something I use most of the time in ZBrush and I felt like there aren't any fast paced nano mesh tutorials here on YouTube. Like always if you have liked the video please consider subscribing and like the video. Share it with your friends or colleagues. Do comment if you have any questions or tell me which topic would you like to cover next regarding ZBrush or any other 3D software. Until next time I will see you in the next video. Please take care.